Hello and welcome to the Radio Silly Video News. Sign up to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Radio Silly for updates on what's happening around the islands and video reports featuring the people and places you know. Our video report is brought to you in association with Truro and Penwith College. Read about courses and opportunities online and watch the building of the new Penwith campus at truro-penwith.ac.uk. Sign up to the Silly Lottery and you've a 1 in 2,000 chance of winning £1,000. You can play if you live on the mainland. It helps keep Radio Silly on air and funds good courses around the islands. Read more at sillylottery.com. The Silly Lottery. The Silly Lottery.com. Jobs in the Isles of Silly Steamship Company look secure after the company signed a deal as preferred bidder for the operation of the vessel, effectively the Salonian 4, in the future. Three groups originally expressed interest, one dropped out leaving Serco in the frame. The signing of a contract between the Root Partnership Chairman and also Chief Executive of our Council, Philip Highgate, and Andrew May, the Chief Executive of the Isles of Silly Steamship Company, means the firm can now be involved in discussions over the new boat, which will be owned and leased by Cornwall Council. The steamship company had originally been part of the Root Partnership along with the Duchy of Cornwall, the former Penwith Council, Cornwall County Council and the Isles of Scilly Council, but left along with British International Helicopters because of their commercial interest in the route. The signing of the contract as preferred bidder follows full European tendering processes and means that the steamship company is likely to maintain its involvement in the route after 90 years of service between Scilly and Penzance. Members of the Student Council of the Five Island School have cut the first turf in the £15 million school project to build a brand new school for St Mary's. Before the diggers and spades started, Council Chairman Julia Day gave a personal account of how her grandchild, her daughter and her husband represented three generations of islanders who had been educated at schools in Scilly. The new building would be very much a community resource. And it's going to be a through school. It's going to take children from 3 to 16. But it will still be Grandad's school and it will still be Mummy's school because it's the community school. It doesn't matter where it's located or where the buildings are or even if we change the name. It's your school and it's our community school. Construction manager of Keir Weston, who are building the school, Steve Rosewell, said the work would start in a matter of weeks. We've certainly risen, we believe we've risen to the challenge as part of the team. Um, that challenge was to des design a school that satisfies all aspects of the brief, uh, to work out the logistics of transporting some 20,000 tonnes of material and plant to, uh, to the island and back. Members of the Rotary Club on the islands have been commended for the cash they've raised to buy the shelter boxes for areas hit by natural disaster. The shelter boxes are tent-like structures that contain essentials in maintaining life and dignity after tsunamis or earthquakes. They were recently dispatched to Haiti and Chile. There are only 2,000 people living on the islands and Tim Guthrie from the Islands Rotary Club says the number they've funded at £500 each has been significant. Um, in fact, Kerry, we've, we've bought in recent years nearly 69 boxes. So we're nearly £35,000 has been raised. So that's an absolutely fantastic sum of money. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody in Rotary is very, very pleased. But most of all, the money's been raised from the island. So it's a big clap, really, and clap on the back for, for everybody who's been involved in raising money over the past few, few years. The Rotary Club in Scilly is also planning to start a trust fund that will provide cash support to islanders who want to see loved ones who are receiving specialist medical care on the mainland. The cost of air travel is prohibitive for many. Tim says there'll be cash help on offer in the future to help meet airfare costs. There will always be a requirement for people to be treated on the mainland. We all know the expense of getting to the mainland and, and we had a very good deal from, from uh, British International um, who uh, along with us and, and, and the League of Friends, um, through Anne and, 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 and Pat, have been, we, we've managed to raise funds and offer cheap or free uh, trips to the mainland so that loved ones can go and visit their, uh, their, their people when they're in, in certain elements of care. A St Mary's man has applied for planning permission to show movies out of doors on a temporary cinema screen. Ewan Roger from the event Silly Organisation hopes that they'll be able to trial running outdoor shows on Pothcresser Beach, Holgate's Green or Town Beach later this summer. 
this year in particular and why we've put the planning permission is we wanted to test the waters. We've had to get the planning permission in order to do that. If we get the planning permission, um, we can test the waters and put on a screening on a beach, hopefully, on the right evening, show the right film. Visitors, locals can come along and enjoy it or not. And we will take that feedback on board. If it's something that doesn't work, then it's a non-starter and we walk away. But let's give something like this an opportunity for the visitor and the local alike to um, let them make their own minds up. Not everybody has been in favour of the plan. We've received a number of complaints to Radio Silly from people who are opposing the planning application. Some people don't believe beaches should be used for such an activity. There are others that are concerned about late night noise. Sheila Thomas, who lives nearby Porth Crescent Beach at the Riga Guest House, says it isn't appropriate for Silly. And people who are trying to bring in these sort of ideas from the mainland should go back there. Yeah, it's hard to get away from that one. Um, I'm sure... Um, you know, I sympathise with all the publicans and everyone on that one. We're providing some entertainment. At the end of the day, people are on holiday. People do like to be entertained. Um, Sydney's a very, very beautiful place, but there are lots of beautiful places all over the world. And, and uh, you know, competition is, is pretty stiff in the tourism market. We're just a bit of entertainment in the evening. And I think, you know, hopefully, I, well, I know that the type of visitor that does is attracted to Sydney is also attracted because of its peaceful and quietness, but also would like to have interesting things going on. So I think, you know, um, it's self-policing in many ways, the type of people that, that, that do come and enjoy the islands and, and respect what they're about. This is, I don't believe, showing any disrespect to that. It, um, it just encourages, hopefully, the visitor to have different types of memories of being here and, um, you know, it's, it's something enjoyable. Noise at midnight, I don't think that people will disperse quietly. Um, it's, they're not drink um, fueled events, but as you say, you know, is that relevant anyway? Um, and, uh, you know, a nice serene evening at the cinema on the beach isn't conducive to then going off and rioting through the streets. We'll follow the planning application and let you know what happens here on Radio Silly.